I Hi. think we are. I think we are live because I saw I so. a countdown. <laughs> so uh, I will say this is uh, the pernicious purveyor of preposterous pomposity here, the King of Connecticut, and I'm filling in for the Hannibal on uh, this episode. I just found out. I was filling in a few minutes ago, and we we have an amazing guest here and uh i will introduce her to you uh Did she you know is, she, is? Uh, <laughs> she is uh she is the widow of a legendary boxer and actor tommy gunn morrison right uh, and uh well, this is uh trisha i believe right correct yes Awesome. Well, Trisha, it is my pleasure to welcome you here to Canada's Top Combat Sports Podcast, the Hannibal TV. And as you, everyone can see, I'm in my uh, in my evening attire here, uh, <laughs> and I didn't uh, know I was hosting this, but this is a nice new robe. And uh, yeah, well, it's great to welcome you to the show. And, and, and uh, let me start out by just asking you a little bit about yourself. Where did you grow up? Well, um, actually, I grew up in England and a little bit in South America as well. Um, and uh, I came to the States, the United States, um, back in the, the 90s. And I was working in tourism and the hotel industry and then um, stayed here ever since. Awesome. Now, is that where you met uh, Tommy? Um, I actually was in Las Vegas in 1996. I had an office there. And um, it was during uh, the fight that he got kicked out. Um, February 10th, 1996. And I didn't actually get to meet him in person then, but I got to hear the, all the buzz and the story about the cancellation of the fight that night and the HIV diagnosis that he was given. And I didn't actually get to meet Tommy until he came to Wichita, Kansas in 2009. And... Um, as I've said in many interviews, I didn't know whether to give him the best room in the hotel or the worst room because he actually had um, ruined my tourism week that week in Vegas, taking up all the hotel rooms and then suddenly everybody just leaving Vegas and I couldn't bring any tourists in from the UK or Canada, actually. So um, when I met him, I wasn't, I wasn't very happy with him. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. So you actually met him after the diagnosis? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the, okay. I wasn't aware yeah. of that. Yeah. The diagnosis was in um, the alleged diagnosis now was in 1996 in Las Vegas. And I didn't meet him until 2009. But the Morrison name had always stuck in my head. And when I saw him on the rooming list to check into my hotel, I thought, no, it can't be the same guy. And it was. So I definitely told him what I thought of him um, when he checked in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it's wild because I, I'm a big believer that your medical information here in the United States should be kept uh, private in my in my shoot life i work for a major law firm i'm with uh, berman law group down right. here in uh, florida so anybody listening who's been involved in an accident anywhere in all 50 states if you've been injured in an accident you can message me on my facebook matthew j granahan but also with regards to uh privacy in America, we have HIPAA, and uh, I get on people, uh, friends, and 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 students that I've coached in fighting and wrestling uh, right. about sharing their private information. You know, yeah. I, I, you should, 
people are going to use that against you. So in the right. case of, uh, of Tommy, can you explain, like, how did that information get leaked to the public? Right. Yeah. Uh, so you're an attorney. That's good. So you might understand a lot of what I've been through, although you probably don't know about what I've been through. Um, when Tommy passed away, um, I had a post-mortem examination done on him and he died September 1, 2013. And on September 2nd, the media went crazy. They said, oh, you know, Tommy Morrison got diagnosed with HIV 1996 and has died of AIDS in 2013. And I'm sitting there thinking, wait a minute, you know, we've just done an anti-mortem at Boston, Massachusetts General Hospital. They found no HIV, no AIDS. We've just done all the AIDS defining diseases. All the test results came back negative. And now I'm waiting for a post-mortem report to come back and the media have already gone crazy. There is no privacy uh, law out here in, in the US apparently. So Tommy died September 1, 2013, September 17th, 2013. I am faxed Tommy's post-mortem report. The post-mortem report says no HIV. And it says it in scientific terms. HIV in scientific terms is a retrovirus. No retroviral particles, no uh, viral particle seen, no abnormalities, no budding retroviruses. This, this is all on the post-mortem. So I'm sitting on this and I'm going, wait, wait, you know, stop. There is a post-mortem and I need to get the truth out. So I then contacted Vegas and I contacted the doctor there, Dr. Robert Boy, and I actually said, you better go have good medical malpractice because um, they just did a post-mortem and there's no HIV. And he didn't die of AIDS. He didn't have any of the AIDS-defining diseases. And um, everybody's saying that he died of, of AIDS. And so Dr. Voigt comes back to me through his attorney. And you know what it's like when you're an attorney? You know, you're representing your client. Okay, I've got, and I'm going to read it verbatim because this has been an eight, nine and a half year lawsuit that I filed in federal district court in, in Nevada, went to the appellate court, went to the US Supreme Court, found new evidence, went back again to the federal court in Nevada, went back again to the US Supreme Court, and went back again to the um, US Supreme Court, perhaps for the last time, who knows. But this, I'm going to read it because everything I'm going to quote you is in court documents, right? And these are filed under oath. So, you know, you look at a court record as opposed to a so-called ESPN 30 for 30 documentary out there that's giving sure. a different story. I'm giving the true story of everything that's happened and everything that's been exposed. So the Las Vegas Council for Dr. Robert Voy says, it is important for you to understand that Dr. Voy did not diagnose and never has diagnosed Mr. Morrison as HIV positive. And this is Counsel Mortensen for Dr. Voy. It's in docket 283. It's on page 28. It's line 14 to 15. This is coming from the physician in Vegas that was there in 1996. So I carry on. I do some more investigation. During the lawsuit, um, Dr. Henry Soloway, and I am going to name names, right? I am going to say who said what. Uh, yes, do it. The CEO of the lab, that's Quest Diagnostics, and I don't know if you've ever dealt with Quest Diagnostics. If you need to recuse yourself right now from the show, please let me know. But no, you know what? Let, let, me, let me tell you, you know, I'm far more on the personal injury side uh, with slip and fall and, and car yeah. accidents, but I can, I can tell the viewers that Quest Diagnostics is, they're really the preeminent, uh, the preeminent a company when it comes to tests such as this. Yeah. So I didn't know that. I'm just a regular person, right? I'm not an attorney. You know, I study paralegal. Yeah. Um, so to file this lawsuit was another podcast story. Um, so the 1996 CEO of Quest Labs, um, Dr. Henry Soloway, 
files an affidavit. It's in court records. I conclude that Mr. Morrison was never infected with HIV virus. That is in docket 136, page 9, and lines 27 to 28. So there is, a, there is another story, and what I'm bringing is a true story. Then, uh, during the court case, um, docket 174, and it was filed on the 8th of June, 2016, page number 7. So even ESPN had access to this document. They had access to all these documents before they brought out their um, defamatory uh, documentary. Here it says, plaintiff, which is me, now recognizes that neither the state defendants, and that would be Margaret Goodman, who runs BADA, Mark Ratner, who used to be the executive commissioner, um, and the Nevada State Athletic, those were the state defendants. So plaintiff now recognizes that neither the state defendants nor Quest Diagnostics ever diagnosed Mr. Morrison as carrying the HIV virus. And that is court record 174, page seven, filed back in 2016. So that is just more proof. Then on uh, docket number 140, um, you've got uh, Bob Bennett, who's in charge of the Nevada Athletic Commission, and he files Morrison was not indefinitely suspended on February 10th, 1996. And that is docket 140. So we know the whole world heard that Tommy Morrison was diagnosed with HIV on February 10th, 1996 and kicked out of boxing on February 10th, 1996. So that's part of the story right there. And I've got to get that out there because there is more. I, I have to read what one of Tommy's fans wrote, which basis, basically puts it all in, the, in a nutshell. Everyone involved in the HIV diagnosis now denies ever giving the diagnosis and denies that they suspended him from boxing. His widow at the time of death has fought tirelessly for a decade to prove he never had HIV and backs it up with a mountain of evidence, including post-mortem tissue samples that show no trace of HIV AIDS. And he goes on to say, please check out the facts for yourself and don't just believe the false narrative that has been circulating as truth for decades. Rest in peace, Tommy. That's one thing Tommy wanted was the truth to be out there. You know, he did not know that the suspension in 1996 was lifted in 2006. Did you know that? No, I, I didn't know that at all. And, and let me tell you, uh, it's so interesting listening to this because all I know is what was reported uh, from the news. Right. And, yeah. you know, as I said, it's my feeling that it's really none of anyone's business what someone is afflicted with that's that's private that's private information but it seems in this case it was a it was a fraud that was perpetuated by the mainstream media for so many years yeah and uh and i've got to ask you this uh let's go back in time okay because there was so much information you've read there yeah. To uh, 1996. It's it's post the the Rocky Five, uh, which which we had a per, which was a great role uh, right. when you when you met him at the time when that was when that was being reported when you met him he must have been he must have been livid that yeah. that this information was was out there. Did he attempt at that time? to to get on any sports media broadcast. I mean, it's not like it is now where we have uh where we have all these podcasts like Canada's Top Combat Sports Podcast. It was but we go back to we go back to the, the mid nineties. It was a totally different world, right? Yeah. I mean we it had was... just controlled media, right? right. Uh, but That's did we right. try to get his story out there at that time with you? He tried. You know what? He was you've got to remember he was twenty six years old, right? He had just been told that he was going to die before he got to the car. 
right? He was told, if you look, have you ever seen ESPN 30 for 30? Did you see the documentary that they did? No, and you know, Trisha, I'll, I'll tell you, you know, Hannibal just asked me to do this interview yeah. just prior to it. So it was kind of a last minute thing. Right. And uh, I would have done some due diligence and research on that. Yeah, I can tell you this, Trisha. I do remember seeing bits and pieces of it maybe yeah. years ago, uh, but I, I can't yeah. tell you. It's a vague recollection. Yeah. Well, they. Um, it's uh, there's there's not a good word for it. They show uh, two scenes in that documentary. One where um, somebody is telling Tommy he has the HIV. Now, who is this person? Stop the, who is this person that's telling him that? Okay, um, his his name is Tony Tony Holden, and he is telling Tommy that he has HIV, and there's no way of sugarcoating it. Is he he says on this documentary, but you have HIV. You know that first of all for somebody who's not a physician to tell somebody else that they basically have this disease that Trisha, is... Who, Trisha, I have to interject. Who was this guy? He wasn't a physician. <laughs> right. He, um, and, and Tony wasn't licensed for the fight either. He had a separate contract with Don King. Tommy had just signed a three fight um, contract with Don King and this was the first fight of the three fights. Then there was going to be another one, and then he was going to be fighting um, Mike Tyson, right? Mm -hmm. So the whole thing is just very strange, um, but Tony Holden was an ex-promoter. He never had a signed contract with Tommy. He was an ex-promoter, but he did have his own contract with Don King, and um, he says in, in the documentary openly so I'm not quoting anything that's not there. He says openly that he met Mark Ratner by the ring and Mark Ratner told Tony Holden that Tommy had HIV and that he was to go and tell him and that the fight was canceled, right? So first of all, Mark Ratner is not a physician. Tony Holden is not a physician. So, you know, you with your privacy thing, privacy rules, sure. And HIPAA, well, first of all, February 1996, the HIPAA law hadn't come out yet. That was Yeah, in that's June. right. Okay. Yep. So, um, you know, the commission has said, well, you know, he signed this and this to say that, you know, if, if he has anything, we're allowed to tell the public. Well, all the statutes that they're quoting me throughout this eight and a half, nine year lawsuit, I come to find out by contacting the legislator, weren't even in existence in 1996. So they had been using laws that weren't in, in existence. They were using them retroactive to a situation in 1996, which is beside the whole point, right? But sure. um, during, the, during the lawsuit, um, I ask, it's called a request for admission, as you're very familiar with, but uh, for others, you're basically asking the defendants questions and they have to answer them. Um, and again, it's court records. Request for admission number 39. Admit you told the media you tested him and found him positive for HIV and Morrison tested positive for HIV. And Mark Ratner replies, deny. He didn't do that. He says he, doesn't, he didn't do that. But all over ESPN, in their ESPN.go.com, it says, since February 10th, when the Nevada Athletic Commission said Morrison tested positive for HIV before a fight, the 44-year-old has spent most of his days dodging the diagnosis. Well, wait a minute. I've got a court record here saying that there was no diagnosis. And, so, and I've also got uh, a court record here, request for admission, saying that they denied ever even saying that. And that's now public knowledge. Anybody can pull that up. So it's something I'm, that I have been working on for eight and a half, nine years. Also, for the media, I can hear like, it in your I can hear it in your voice, Trisha. You yeah. know the the strain and the stress. And I want you to get back to that, but I want to take the viewers back 
because you may have some younger viewers here. Yeah. And they may not understand this. Yeah. In the 1990s, you know, beginning really in the 1980s with Rock Hudson, HIV uh, was was a death sentence. Yeah. It uh, it wasn't what it is now. It's really uh, it's it's something now that uh, is 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 not even fatal. I mean, people live normal lives and they take you know medications for. It. But back then, it was a a death sentence, and there was such a stigma that was associated with yeah. it. And um, you know, you remember Magic Johnson, right? And and some of the fans might be too young to even remember that. Uh, was supposedly diagnosed with it, you know, and he's still alive and healthy now. Uh, but there was say, what do you think was the the impetus? Was it what was the conspiracy, if any, behind this uh, in, in promoting this false information, Tricia? You know, that's that's hard to figure out because this is still kind of ongoing. Um, there's a few things. First of all, Quest Diagnostics, and I recently found that out when we were in the U.S. Supreme Court a few months ago. The tests that they were using, uh, $25 tests, were not FDA approved. They were what's called LDTs, laboratory developed tests, which have no clinical um, support to them to show their efficacy, that they actually do diagnose or detect what they say that they detect. So first of all, there's that, the testing. The testing throughout also was not FDA approved. One of the other tests was a PCR test. So as much as people say, well, why didn't he get tested again? Well, he did, he kept on getting tested. And it was, um, well, what test was it? Was it something that de detected HIV or was it something that detected antibodies to autoimmune disorders? Because that's exactly what he did have, so-called false positive. You can test positive on a test but not have what they say you've got. You could be triggering a false positive. So people will say, okay, so what about the test in Vegas? Did he not have it twice? He did, but it was the same test, not FDA approved. Well, what about the test in Tulsa when he comes out with this big um, press conference and says, I have just been told I've tested positive for the virus. Well, in 1996, that test did not detect the virus anyway. So scientifically, he should not have said that he tested positive for the virus because there was no virus test. Um, also, the defendants could not provide a test to match up with that press conference. And then New York, there's also another media, again, ESPN, right, um, where they show Tommy's blood being taken and flown to New York. Well, um, they can't find the results for that. So, you know, it's just another very strange situation. Yeah, you but, know, Trisha, uh, ESPN is, is a very – agenda uh, driven network in in many regards yeah. and we can kind of leave it at that they're very yeah. agenda driven yeah. and uh, I I've got to get caught up when did this 30 for 30 come out that you're referencing well 30 for 30 came out in September of 2017. And a lot of these court records were available prior to that date. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so they were they were pushing that they were pushing that agenda along, uh, and uh, yeah. uh, you filed suit at that time in 2017. I filed suit actually on the 24th of July 2014 within the statute of limitations. Tommy died September 1, 2013. I okay. filed suit on the 24th of July, 2014, and the um, judge closed it really quickly in 2016. But, but wait, Trisha, I want to clarify because you, you, I was under the impression, I may have misunderstood, that you were suing the uh, ESPN versus 30 for 30. No, 
Uh, okay. the, ex, the actual uh, defendants were uh, Nevada State Athletic Commission. Okay, okay, good. Margaret Goodman, uh, Mark Ratner, but they've all confessed in court records that they never diagnosed him with HIV. So right now, the only narrative out there, false narrative out there, is the ESPN um, story that has to be taken down. Okay, yeah. So to clarify that, and you know, I'm sorry that you had to you had to go through this. You know, you learn uh, firsthand how misinformed and how vicious uh, the the media could be. And, and, and I'm yeah. glad that you were able to come here on, on this platform right. uh, and discuss it. Uh, but what I'd like to do is I'd like you to talk about Tommy, uh, Tommy Morrison, the person a little bit, kind of give right. you the floor uh, to tell people uh, what kind of a guy he was. We know he was a great actor and an outstanding boxer. Yeah. Yeah. He was, he was just such a great guy and he had a great career um, 290 amateur fights he had. He had 50 Toughman uh, contests that he fought underage, right? And yep. 51 professional fights. And he was kicked out of boxing at the age of 26, right? Which yeah, is heart- yeah, what a career. Which is heartbreaking. Um, given a, a deadly diagnosis, he obviously went through very dark years. Um, he wrote his own little booklet called My Darkest Years, where he does do drugs, um, and he's very open about that. And he says, I had to fill a void. You know, sure. I've just had everything taken. Um, I have to fill a void. And he didn't like to watch boxing or anything. And But he carried on working out in the gym. When I met him, uh, it was probably the most sober time of his life. First of all, I had never watched Rocky V, uh, so I didn't even know about Tommy Gunn. And I wasn't into boxing. I was a, a tennis player. So it, he, he almost liked the fact that I knew nothing about him, right? And mm-hmm. it was like a fresh start for him. Sure. So, sure. Um, so he was able to um, be himself. And he just wanted to be normal. You know, he, he took out the garbage. He, he fed the dogs. He took the dogs to the groomer. Um, he just wanted to be a normal person. But always at the back of his head is this HIV stigma, right? Oh, yeah. You know, people the are The scarlet talking. letter, right? It was like the scarlet letter. You know, it yeah. was awful, you know. And, and, I, and yeah. I always say this to people, mentioned, you know, about privacy, but I always tell people, you know, don't tell people more than they need to know about your life and in general and anything, because right. uh, people tend to try to use information against you. And, and this was got to take people back to that time because it was a much it was a much different time uh, yeah. than it is now. You know, That's and, right. and uh, well, what you have to his- imagine you have to imagine, you know, we've all been through this covid thing, right, for the last two, three years you know, where you can't touch anybody. You have to be six foot away. You know, yeah. don't see I, mean, I kind of got to say, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in Florida, so we haven't really experienced right. a lot of the craziness that other places right. have. But it's the same thing. You know, it was the same thing for him where people did not want to come close to him, didn't want right. to touch him, didn't want to breathe the same air as him. Um, you know, didn't want him to sneeze or, or anything. When we walked through airports, he said, okay, Tricia, he said, um, just wait and see. There'll be people looking at me thinking that I already died, right? And I said, what? Oh, and, yeah. and there were. I mean, his whole life had been put out there, and and now I am trying to repair that. That was one of the things that, you know, in the back of his mind was always how – can I be alive when I feel so good? And how did, how did this happen? And, you know, are the tests right? You know, why, why did the commission, you know, cancel my fight? If, if I did have HIV, why didn't they accommodate the fight in some other way? He was always thinking stuff. He was always. Magic Magic Johnson went back to playing basketball. If you remember, 
yeah. don't believe he ever had it. He, he ever had it either. But um, I think that was another agenda they were driving. But but he went back and played uh, basketball. Now, it, am I wrong or didn't Tommy Morrison uh, box in West Virginia at one point? Didn't he have a comeback uh, for and for a couple of fights in West Virginia? Yeah, he had he had a fight in West Virginia. They you you got you have to remember that some of the states didn't require HIV testing anyway. You know, mm -hmm. if you go back and you read Fauci, I mean, at the time, Tommy knew Fauci. Fauci knew Tommy. Right now, everybody knows the name Dr. Anthony Fauci. Right, even Anthony Fauci wrote back on February twelfth, nineteen ninety six. You can't catch HIV in the boxing ring. He wrote. Right. Um, so there weren't a lot of commissions that actually had HIV testing. No, they, they don't. I mean, I deal with fight, fight commissions with right. MMA um, and a lot of them don't. I ha right. I'm not not currently, but years ago, I, I never read that a lot of them did, didn't. Uh, but you got to remember, too, and, and I'll go back being older to when. This was probably before that time frame was when the rock clutching thing came out and I was still scholastically in school. I was in right. middle school or early high school or whatever. And I remember uh, they, we were discussing, nobody knew how you could catch this thing. And right. people were thinking that you could catch it from like, if, if I had put my book down and I had it and someone went and grabbed my book and touched right. it. So people have to understand what a what a, a crazy uh, world it was, you know, and the, the lack of information back then. Right, that's right. You know, there's something also um, in the lawsuit where, you know, I've included Anthony Fauci said back in 1984, if you've got two things, PCP and KS, PCP being pneumocystis carina and KS being Carposi sarcoma, you have AIDS, right? So we even had Tommy tested for those two things uh, back in 2012 and it's totally negative. So he never had the virus, um, you know, and you say that a lot of people don't actually test for it. Well, in order to include that in the licensing, you had to have that with the legislator. You had to have that sure. passed. And and it's called the Administrative Procedures Act. So, so Trisha, let me ask you then. Let me ask you then. Why did he box in more states like he did in West Virginia? Um, if that wasn't an issue, not that he had it, but that that could have potentially been an issue because of all the misinformation. Why didn't he he then box in more states and maybe even outside of the country down in Mexico? Well, he did. He did. Okay. He yeah. He fought down in Mexico. And then he fought in West Virginia and then um, I think it was Wyoming as well. So he had three, three other fights, but he had taken, obviously he had been suspended um, indefinitely worldwide. But you also have to think who is going to want to fight somebody that the world has said has got this deadly disease. It wasn't That's easy true. to find an opponent. Right? Yeah, of and, course. And when you found an opponent, the commission would say, no, we're not going to sanction this fight. Even though, for example, like West Virginia, they did not have a rule to do HIV testing, even though he did it. So they followed him like he was in his own bubble. They followed him around from commission state to state. He had an offer to fight in New Zealand. He had an offer to fight in Australia. He had an offer to fight in Kansas. But everywhere, everyone is saying, no, well, you're suspended. You, you have HIV since 1996, and you don't get rid of HIV. There's one um, particular interview with Dr. Margaret Goodman, who runs VADA, um, the Voluntary Anti-Doping Association, which has been in the news recently, and she hounded him. In 2007, she came out with this um, media outlet saying, you know, um, upon my request, I asked Dr. John Hyatt from Quest Diagnostics to retrieve Tommy Morrison's results. And, and Dr. Hyatt is um, a physician and well-known pathologist, right? And he said they were unequivocally positive. Well, in this lawsuit, Dr. Hyatt was not a physician 
and he was not a pathologist. So she lied to the media and she got caught in this lawsuit. And then there's another request for admission, number 29, uh, where I target Dr. Margaret Goodman because she had hounded Tommy so much try, for, for him trying to do a comeback. Like you said, why didn't he fight, right? Well, if you come out with the media and you have somebody like Dr. Margaret Goodman, who has a huge status in the boxing world, I write, admit, you can provide a document that confirms the diagnosis of the virus HIV in Tommy's blood on February 10th, 1996. And she responds, deny. She couldn't. She could not provide anything. So the history of HIV, the history dates back to 1996. Right. Well, now, after eight and a half, nine years of judicial, you know, journey, there is no longer a history of HIV dating back to 1996 because nobody has diagnosed him and nobody kicked him out. So I have to get the truth out for Tommy. That was kind of like a deathbed promise to find out yeah. what happened. Right. Yeah. That's and it, it's it's so unfortunate that he he passed away uh, knowing that uh, it, 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 the mission, that mission hadn't been completed. And, yeah. you know, I want to kind of kind of pivot uh, before we close this out, just to ask you a couple of, of, of questions regarding uh, some folks that uh, Tommy had uh, interaction with. And uh, I, what were his impressions of Don King? Well, um, everybody knows what, what Don King is like, right? So you, you take that risk as a boxer when you go into a contract with him. The um, actual FBI, uh, Tommy did end up in jail in 2000, and he writes this in his book, My Darkest Years. Um, the FBI did come and visit Tommy in jail, and they said, we can get you out early if you can give us information on Don King. And Tommy said, I have no information. You know, when I get out of jail for this GUI or whatever, um, I hope to contact him and get him to sign me up again. Right? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Don King has uh, got a, a shady past for sure. What about uh, Sylvester uh, Stallone? Yeah. Sly, well, um, I don't think I've received a phone call of condolences from Sly. I hate to say that. Uh, I think no, he's been pretty. Bad. I think he's been pretty busy, and Rocky Five was always something that was, as Tommy would say, would, was the redheaded stepchild of the Rocky movies, right? Um, but as people watch it, they are. Um, it, it, it's affectionate now. The the Rocky well, Five you movie. Know, I ask you about Don King because in Rocky Five, yeah, um, there's there's yeah the character that's very uh right very similar to to a Don King and you know if folks go back and watch that movie now yeah in 2022 and 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 uh, the racial stuff uh, you know Rocky being the Italian boxer and then they got the Great White Hope right. and uh, I it was. Uh, it was one, it was a hell of a, of a movie. Right. Uh, I, th I think it was that, that, that scene where, I mean, Tommy's character where he kind of turns uh, away from and on uh, Rocky uh, it is, is pretty, it, it's pretty, it's a pretty gripping story. And, and really yeah. to me, I think it's one of the better of the, yeah the Rocky movies. And like you said, it's, it, it may be the stepchild, but uh, I, I think the plot, the plot line, because let's face it, like Rocky four, not a lot of plot plot twists. You got the heel with Ivan Drago, you know, rock, go back to Rocky three, you know, Mr. T and, and Hulk Hogan, you know, and Mr. T is uh clubber Lang. I mean, that's, that's yeah. so, there's not a lot of complexity to the characters. And then, yeah. and then two and one essentially the same. I would argue that Rocky Five and 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 Tommy's role in that uh, was the most complex up to that point 
of right. uh, the flat lines because I know I was good friends with uh, with the late Gene LaBelle, the godfather of grappling, who uh, knew uh, Sly really well, legendary stunt man and and right. did acting in Hollywood. And he told me, you know, he told me, he says, you know, S Sylvester Stallone's one of those guys that he just plays himself all the time. Yeah, and Tommy you know, was in the, playing the Rocky movies. Yeah. Right, and and Tommy was playing himself in Rocky Five, and I've only ever watched it once, and I watched it about four years after Tommy had died. So Tommy would always look at me, and and he's he would say, "Oh, you remember that scene in Rocky Five? And I go, "Look, I've never watched it," and he would start laughing because he he thought that was pretty cool. Um, but he no, was a great thought, actor. He was a great actor, and I got to ask you, Trisha, did he have any other acting roles uh, after uh, that movie? Because he was a, he was a great in that. Um, he wanted to get into acting a lot more. He was contacted by John Gotti Jr. Uh, back in two thousand and eleven <laughs> to be <Yeah>. in, <laughs> to be in the movie. I'm, laugh I'm laughing for another reason, Trisha, because um, one of the more popular videos on this channel. Uh, the Hannibal TV is uh, a press conference I did with uh, Johnny A. Light from the Gambino family, who is, I've oh. got a lot of history with those guys, who is uh, uh, calling out Cotty Jr. to box was oh, uh, yeah. from last year. And uh, Phil Baroni, the New York badass, who's I managed for years, was uh, right. uh, was enforcer for, for the Gambinos. And and uh, his father was was a gold star detective that uh, famously turned on those guys in, in the Gotti Jr. trial. So I have a lot of history when you mention Gotti Jr. That's kind of funny. Yeah, Gotti Jr., he called Tommy one day and he told him basically, you know, I want you in the movie that I'm putting together uh, in the shadow of my father, right? Yeah, and oh, so yeah. They were, they were talking and John Gotti Jr. said to Tommy, he said, Stop getting into trouble. You know, I want you in my movie, but you've got to stop getting into trouble. And he talked about, you know, how much his whole family loved Tommy and, and they thought he was great. Now, when Tommy, um, you know, I can talk to our, for hours with you about, you know, all the stuff that happened to Tommy in the years we were together. But there was one particular scene where Tommy in real life is in jail in Tennessee and I have John Gotti Jr. calling me and emailing me saying that he's going to try and get him out. And um, yeah, so, yeah, it's yeah, uh, I know John and I know his sister, Victoria, pretty well. Yeah, um, yeah. too. Yeah, that um, so, so that never that, I, I, that never happened, though, that role. That never happened. I think there were some changes anyway to the movie. Um, John Travolta, I think, was still going to be in it and stayed in yeah. it, but they made some other changes. Yeah. Um, so it wasn't, it never happened, but, but Tommy was really excited for it. And his plan was to get into more movies. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I want to encourage the listeners to all go back and watch Rocky five. I'm going to go back yeah. and watch it. And, uh, that's kind of a great way for us to kind of segue out of this. Cause it's a positive, uh, memory of, uh, your your late husband and I just want to tell you you know we've been a spectacular guest here and I'm really sorry for your loss and sorry yeah. for everything that you that you've gone through and I want to wish you the absolute best of luck uh, with uh, your case uh, and uh, anything anything you want to give a shout out as far as where people can can follow you or anything that you're doing yeah, I'm on, um, I'm on Twitter, I'm on Instagram, I'm, and I'm on Facebook. One thing that Tommy did say was back in 2011, I fought for my fans, would they fight for me? And so, you know, the only way I can get the truth out, the true story about Tommy for Tommy is through the fans because the media are vicious. They won't print something now that contradicts what they printed back in 1996. It's going to take time to repair everything that happened to Tommy. Um, but you're welcome to look at court records and see my posts. I'm very open with it. And uh, please share. Please share. What's your uh, What's your Twitter What's your Twitter handle, uh, Trisha? Um, uh, best to go. You'll see it on Trisha Tommy Morrison. 
or you'll see another version, Tommy, Trisha Morrison. Um, so it's both that. It has both our names, Tommy, Trisha Morrison, on the Facebook and on the Instagram and on Twitter. Yeah. Great. Well, you know, Trisha, I want to thank you for coming on the show. I want to thank the Hannibal TV uh, fans for listening. And I want to yeah. wish you the absolute best of luck. And Tommy's yeah. looking down and he's, he's very happy. He uh, is. Yeah. Yeah. Have he a great, uh, have a great afternoon folks or great evening and the King of Connecticut signing out. And I got a quick joke for you before we close out. What's 240 pounds dashingly handsome. <laughs>